This video is sponsored in part by Tokyo Treat and Sakurako. Stick around to see how you can get an exquisite snacking experience. Hello everyone, Golden Nova here. Let's face it, Yu-Gi-Oh! is a really fun game, but sometimes it's very exhausting. What with the constant power creep and the scythe locking and the last minute ban lists, it can be enough to make you want to step away for a bit. But thankfully, in the designer's infinite wisdom, they've accounted for just such a thing by making a whole other game in Yu-Gi-Oh! Or rather, take the mechanics of another card game and made a whole archetype around it. Presenting Flower Cardians, an anime archetype piloted by side character Chojuro Takumatsu that made its debut in the August 2016 side set Dragons of Legend Unleashed, and they're based on Hanafuda cards, a style of Japanese playing cards that are used to play a variety of different games, kind of like how a deck of playing cards we here in the West would be familiar with, that can be used to play everything from Go Fish to Texas Hold'em. And today, I'm going to show you how they work in Yu-Gi-Oh!, and how these cards reflect the mechanics of Koi Koi the game this archetype is meant to emulate. So let's review these suits to see what we're working with, shuffle up to see how this all plays out, then see if there are any intrepid players we can deal in. It's time to pair up with Flower Cardians. But before we continue, a quick reminder that today's video is brought to you by Sakurako and Tokyo Treat, a pair of amazing snack box subscription services that deliver authentic Japanese sweets and treats right to your doorstep, both of which offering a unique take on a culinary cultural journey. Sakurako sources local, traditional treats that really give you a sense of the rich history of that month's theme. For July, we have Tea Time in Yokohama, and it comes in this beautiful blue and gold box. And to go that extra mile, Sakurako worked together with the Kanagawa Prefectural Government, the capital of which is Yokohama, to put this box together. To celebrate this bountiful collection of sweets, my partner Delilah and I sat down and had a tasting party to sample some of these treats. Here's some footage of us sharing a Bikuri Doriyaki. It's like this pancake with sweet red bean paste in it. I'd never tried one before, but I absolutely loved it. And I think Delilah here puts it best. This is like biting into a fluffy cloud of happiness, and um, I don't think Nova likes this at all, and I think he's gonna have to give it to me too. Oh yeah, and these cream wafers were absolutely delectable. They're like nice and like, crunchy, and then it's like soft part. It's got a really good texture to it. But that's not all you're getting, because when it comes to enjoying traditional cuisine, it's not just what you eat, but what you eat it with. That's why Sakura Co. provides an exclusive piece of diningware every month, and for July, you can get the Sakura Side Plate. Elegantly shaped, beautifully colored, and most importantly of all, dishwasher safe. It's a wonderful little side plate you can put one or two of your favorite treats while enjoying some of the included green tea. If you're interested in contemporary snacking, you'll want to check out Tokyo Treat. It's chock full of limited edition and popular treats ranging from sweet to savory. Uh, this month had cookies and cream Kit Kats in it. Can you imagine how much I was on Cloud9 about this? Oh, uh, yes, it has that rich white chocolatey goodness. Oh my god. Oh. There's also this really succulent apple pie that was flaky without being messy, with a delightful apple jam that was fresher than anything in packaging has any right to be. Yeah. Yeah, that's delectable. Those last two treats are just a part of what you can find in the Summer Matsuri Box, which is meant to celebrate the many summer festivals going on this time of year. In fact, it's in the name, as Matsuri is the Japanese word for a festival, something I learned from the wonderful cultural guides you can find in every box of Tokyo Tree and Sakurako. Not only does it have a rundown of what you can find in each box, it also has a wealth of other information like regional history, the origin of food items, and some vocabulary. Actually, check this out. So at the end of the Tokyo Treat one, it mentions Tanabata, a festival of romance, which those who watched my Shinobird Explained video will be familiar with, because that's what the archetype is based on. So the more of these you read, the better chance you'll have of catching a fun reference in cards both new and old. And you get a ton of bang for your buck. Uh, all the footage I've been showing is a small fraction of what we actually got on camera, because these boxes are so full of snacks we couldn't actually eat all of them in one sitting, so you'll be set for a while. Like, we recorded all of that last week, and we still have snacks that we're eating through. Now these themes change every month, so if you want these fantastic boxes, click my link in the description and use code GOLDEN to not only be a part of this phenomenal experience, you get $5 off your first box, and you help the channel out all at the same time. 
Thanks again to Sakura Co. and Tokyo Treat for sponsoring this episode, and now, back to the video. So, what's the deal with Flower Cardians? Well, they're a series of dark attribute warrior type monsters of varying levels, and the goal is to cycle through as many of them as possible, chaining their effects together until you've assembled several of them onto the field to make your impressively powerful synchro monsters. But the way this is done is by emulating the game of Koi Koi. And so, for the first time in Golden Nova history, I will now detour us away from the subject at hand momentarily and provide to you a second mini video. Koi Koi Explained, before rejoining the video proper. However, if you'd like your Yu-Gi-Oh! experience to be uninterrupted by such things as trivia, time codes are provided so you can skip ahead, but I do proffer a warning that you will be missing out on some very interesting trivia that will make you sound very knowledgeable next time Cardians show up at your local game store. <clears throat> so, what's the deal with Koi Koi? Well, first we're going to have to know what a deck of Hanafuda cards consists of. It's a 48 card deck divided into 12 suits with 4 cards each. These suits all have a particular flower or plant theming, each of which represents one month of the year. As for Koi Koi itself, it's kind of a fusion of Go Fish and Poker. Each player starts with a hand of 8 cards, and there's an additional 8 cards left face up in the play area. The player who goes first reveals a card from their hand, and if it matches a suit of a card in the play area, you take it and place the pair face up on your side of the field, revealing it to both players. While the card taken from the main play area is replaced by a card from the top of the deck, and both players continue this until the round is over. Now, the goal of each round is to collect cards so that you obtain a certain combination of cards, or a Yaku. Different combinations yield different amounts of points, which carry over from round to round, the winner being the one with the most of these points after a set amount of rounds. Now, this is different from the point value of individual cards, which don't actually translate to the point total used for winning the game, but is more of a kind of sorting method to help show which cards are grouped together. And while the cards themselves don't traditionally have a number on them to identify their point value, it's something you're meant to memorize, the Yu-Gi-Oh cards actually help a lot in this regard. The one point the 10-point cards have 100 attack and defense, the 10-point cards have 1,000, and the 20-point cards have 2,000. Basically, you take their value as a Hanafuda card, multiply it by 100, and that's how you get their Yukio stats. Strangely enough, they haven't printed any of the 5-point scroll cards, but if they did, they'd be at 500 if they kept to this theme. Also, in addition to the plant featured on the card, you can tell which card belongs to which suit by looking at their levels. Each of the pines are level 1, the cherry blossoms are level 3, and their levels correspond to the month they represent. Using the previous example, you can see that pine represents January, while the cherry blossoms represent March. Now, a round can immediately end once a player has assembled the cards for one of those Yaku, and move on to the next round, adding that Yaku's point value to your score. However, if you want to go for an even higher point total, you can instead announce Koi Koi, which allows the game to continue until another Yaku is assembled, either enhancing a set you already have, or making a whole new one. The catch, though, is that if your opponent assembles a Yaku before you assemble another one, they can end the round, and their point value is doubled. And only the person who ends the round gets points, so even if you have a combination of cards that would give you points, it's now worth nothing because you didn't end the game on your turn. The brilliant part about this is, because all the pairs any player has obtained is revealed face up, you can actually see how far along any given player is towards completing a set, so you can make a calculated risk, expecting it will take your opponent some time to catch up. But because you can't see exactly what the other player has in their hand, there's a chance you get completely blindsided by a clever opponent you're underestimating. It's kinda wild. There are many other rules intricacies, but in the interest of not getting bogged down by who gets to be the dealer and what special hands are, I'm instead going to be leaving some links in the description with some videos that helped me get a better handle on the game of Koi Koi while researching, which I highly recommend you watch after this video. For now, it's time to get into the cards based on these cards. First is Flower Cardian Pine, a level 1 monster with 100 attack and defense, and if this card is normal summoned, draw a card, show it, then send it to the grave unless it's a Flower Cardian monster. And if this card is destroyed by a battle and sent to the grave, or if this card in your possession is destroyed by an opponent's card effect and sent to the grave, you draw a card. Now, we'll be seeing that first condition crop up a lot, asking you to draw a card, reveal it, and pitch it if it's not a Flower Cardian. So we're already seeing the connection with Koi Koi. Remember how you reveal a card in your hand to take a matching suit from the play area? This works in a similar way, though the Yu-Gi-Oh! version is much more lenient, letting you match with any Cardian off the top of your deck, not just a Pine. 
In Koi Koi, if you reveal a card that doesn't have a matching suit in the play area, you have to donate it to the play area. At that point, you get to draw a card, and if that card matches a suit on board, you get to claim the pair. Otherwise, you have to pass your turn. So normal summoning Pine is like donating it to the play area, and you're hoping the card on top of your deck will pair with it. Otherwise, you get nothing. It's a beautifully executed translation of design, and it's already got me pining for more. Flower Cardian Pine with Crane is a level 1 monster with 2000 attack and defense that can't be normal summoned or set, and must first be special summoned from the hand by tributing a level 1 Flower Cardian monster, except a copy of itself. You've gotta match those suits after all. If this card is special summoned, draw a card, and if you do, show it. Then you can special summon it if it's a Flower Cardian monster, otherwise send it to the grave. At the end of the battle phase, if this card battled, draw a card. Now, the problem here is that there's only one level 1 Cardian at the moment, so until we get Flower Cardian Pine with Red Scroll, we only have one monster we can use to get out Crane, but thankfully, we have a lot of tools to help us assemble the right cards we need to complete our pairs. And having a monster with a decent attack stat that can help apply pressure to our opponent while drawing us more cards is a blessing. I just really think the imagery doesn't belong here. Um, as we progress, we'll see a number of monsters from across Yu-Gi-Oh's history being represented in place of the traditional suit modifiers. And while Crane Crane does match the Crane and Sun card, Crane Crane is also one of the most powerful level 3 extenders, acting as a kind of tour guide in BA, but for yarded monsters instead of from the deck. And to see it being relegated to the level 1 area comes with a lot of dissonance. You couldn't have just put Sacred Crane here? Come on! Flower Cardian Cherry Blossom is a level 3 monster with 100 attack and defense, and if you control a level 2 or lower Flower Cardian monster, you can special summon this card from your hand, also you can't normal or special summon monsters for the rest of the turn except Flower Cardians. And once per turn, you can tribute a Flower Cardian to draw a card, and if you do, show it, then if it's a Flower Cardian monster, you can take a Flower Cardian monster from your deck and either add it to your hand or special summon it. Otherwise, send the card you drew to the grave. This makes Cherry Blossom your Stratos, though because it activates by tributing a Flower Cardian, it might be more like a Galaxy Wizard. But that ain't half bad considering how many monsters we'll end up throwing onto the field, as it can clear the way for cards further on down the line. And while you can special summon it from the hand, A, you don't have to because it doesn't have that kind of restriction, and B, you might not want to, because while you want to be playing as many Cardians in your main deck as possible so you don't whiff their effect, the extra deck is a whole other beast, and with all the monsters you'll be fielding, you might want to dip into a few links. But how does Cherry Blossom line up with the rest of the cards in the context of Koi Koi? Previously, we talked about how you have to match suits of cards, and Cherry Blossom works with any lower level Cardian. Well, this might be a reference to the Kasuyaku, which is made up of 10 or more of the one-point cards. And moving forward, we'll see a similar summoning mechanic on all the 100 attack or one-point cards. Now, gathering 10 together in Yu-Gi-Oh! is a colossal feat, especially because several of the suits haven't even been printed yet, but if you're able to do it, Naturia Beetle here will give you a nice little wink of affirmation, truly the height of honor. Flower Cardian Cherry Blossom with Curtain is a level 3 monster with 2000 attack and defense that can't be normal summoned or set, and must first be special summoned by its own effect. You can reveal this card in your hand to draw a card, and if you do, show it, then special summon this card if the drawn card was a Flower Cardian. Otherwise, send it and this card to the grave. And during either player's damage step, when your Flower Cardian monster battles an opponent's monster, you can discard this card, and your battling monster gains 1000 attack until the end of the turn. So if you're confident that the top card of your deck is a Flower Cardian, then this is more extension that doesn't really care about your board state. If you're not so confident, then it gets to be a Kalut for 1000, which doesn't really mean much for our 1-point cards, as 1100 isn't much of a stat line nowadays, but when paired with our other 20-point cards and our Synchros, this can make for an amazing game changer. So Curtain is very much the Cardian's bullfighter cape to Blackwing's Painted Tunnel. Flower Cardian Peony with Butterfly is a level 6 tuner monster with 1000 attack and defense that can't be normal summoned or set, and must first be special summoned from your hand by tributing a Flower Cardian monster, except a copy of itself. If this card is special summoned, draw a card, then show it. Then, if it's a Flower Cardian monster, look at the top 3 cards of your opponent's deck, then place them all on the top or bottom of the deck in any order. Otherwise, send the drawn card to the grave. When this card is used as Synchro Material, you can treat it and all other Synchro Material that have a level as level 2 monsters. Interesting wording on that last part, does that mean that if it lacked that condition you could use Links and Xyz? 
Uh, but yes, this is our first tuner, and its level modulation effect is no joke. It lets us keep the theming of the levels equaling the months the cards represent, while giving us a wide range of monsters to choose from. If we're under the Flower Cardian lock provided by a lot of our cards, then we do have our work cut out for us. But if we're able to avoid that lock, we can access any evenly leveled monster from 4 to 10. That means Herald of the Arclight, Armory Arm, Brianak, Stardust Dragon, Crimson Blader, and even Barone. Heck, if you want to use a Cardian in your extra monster zone, you can crank that dial all the way up to 12, getting Geomathmech Final Sigma. And while the on special summon effect feels a bit more at home in a spiral deck, this one lets you tuck cards beneath your opponent's deck. The more format knowledge you have, the more you can screw your opponent over on a good draw, forcing a Garnet on top, while impactful starters and board breakers get sunk to the bottom. And it's very important that you put this pruning practice into effect, otherwise your opponent's deck is just going to grow out of control. Flower Cardian Clover with Boar is a level 7 monster with a 1000 attack and defense that can't be normal summoned or set, and must first be special summoned by attributing a Flower Cardian monster except a copy of itself. If this card is special summoned, draw a card, and if you do, show it. Then if it's a Flower Cardian monster, you can destroy a monster your opponent controls, otherwise send the drawn card to the grave. So we've got another monster we can cycle onto the field while digging us deeper into our deck, looking for those sweet, sweet combos. And this makes a great bridge, especially going second, because it outs a monster along the way without targeting. It really helps accentuate the excitement that comes from activating each of these effects, hoping the top card of your deck will hold fortune and not ruin. In fact, you could say that these effects are never boring. No, no, wait, uh, you could say that these effects require a little bit of extra luck from your four-leaf clover. <laughs> I cracked myself up. Flower Cardian Zebra Grass is a level 8 monster with 100 attack and defense, and while you control a level 7 or lower Flower Cardian monster, you can special summon this card from your hand. Also, you can't normal or special summon monsters for the rest of the turn except Flower Cardians. And if this card is normal or special summoned, you can reveal any number of Flower Cardian monsters in your hand, shuffle them into the deck, then draw the same number of cards. This is actually fairly strong because even if you stuff your deck to the gills with Flower Cardians, you're still going to have some that are Flower Cardian support spells and traps that will unfortunately still cause you to whiff. With Zebra Grass, you can shuffle some back into the deck to hopefully increase your odds of flipping over a Flower Cardian, as well as trading out any in your hand that don't fit with your current loadout. Kinda wish we just tucked them to the bottom instead of shuffling, because now we have the Gladiator's Respite issue of potentially drawing back cards we don't want, but a chance is better than nothing. Also, um, if they're going to call it Zebra Grass, why did we tap a Naturia Cosmo Beat for the art and not Dark Zebra? Like, it and Boar Soldier came out in the same set, and no, I do not care that Cosmo Beat looks like the grass on the traditional card art, I wanna see a zebra, darn it! Flower Cardian Zebra Grass with Moon is a level 8 monster with 2000 attack and defense that can't be normal summoned or set, and must first be special summoned from the hand by attributing a level 8 Flower Cardian monster, except a copy of itself. If this card is special summoned, draw a card, and if you do, show it. Then you can special summon it if it's a Flower Cardian monster, otherwise send the drawn card to the grave. Though, keep in mind, you can't special summon every Flower Cardian you peel off the top, because a lot of them have this very same special summon restriction. But at least you get to keep it in your hand. Also, once per turn, if this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle, you can draw a card. Zebra Grass with Moon is very similar to Pine with Crane, giving you card draw for battling. This can come up if you aren't able to assemble a Synchro combo, and you just need a few extra cards to get things going. And with the help of Cherry Blossom with Curtain, you can even take down things as big as 2900. It's also guest starring the Wicked Avatar as the Moon, marking its first solo appearance away from the Wicked Gods, and they seem to be doing a pretty good job. Looks like they've certainly done a good job of tuckering out Cosmo Beat, because they aren't even able to stay awake for the second card. Flower Cardian Maple with Deer is a level 10 monster with 1000 attack and defense that can't be normal summoned or set, and must first be special summoned from the hand by attributing a Flower Cardian monster, except a copy of itself. And if this card is special summoned, draw a card, and if you do, show it. Then if it's a Flower Cardian monster, you can destroy a spell or trap card your opponent controls. Otherwise, send the drawn card to the grave. So like Clover with Boar, Maple with Deer can smash your opponent's cards so they aren't an issue when you go for later parts of your combo. And because neither of them are once per turn, the more of these you can cycle through, the more havoc you can cause. It might not do as much to advance your game plan as other cards, but it's more like a delicious maple syrup that makes the rest of your theme even tastier. 
Flower Cardian Willow is a level 11 monster with 100 attack and defense, and while you control a level 10 or lower Flower Cardian, you can special summon this card from your hand. Also, you can't normal or special summon monsters for the rest of the turn, except Flower Cardian monsters. And once per turn, you can target a Flower Cardian monster in your grave, shuffle it into your deck, then draw a card. This gets you a free monster on board and a draw that can't whiff. You'll just need to have a Cardian monster in Grave, which you'll more than likely have what with all the tributing. This gives you an extra card to work with and shuffles your Cardians back into the deck so you have a better chance of not whiffing your draw, as well as getting back monsters with effects you need. This card's a cornerstone of the deck and you'll want to try cycling through as many as possible in a single turn, because each new Willow can shuffle a new card to draw another. I'm telling you, Giant Trunade here really cranked this effect up to 11. Flower Cardian Willow with Calligrapher is a level 11 tuner monster with 2000 attack and defense that can't be normal summoned or set, and must first be special summoned from the hand by tributing a level 11 Flower Cardian monster, except a copy of itself. If this card is special summoned, you draw a card, and if you do, show it, then you can special summon it if it's a Flower Cardian monster, otherwise send the drawn card to the grave. It also has the same effect as Peony with Butterfly, where you can treat all synchro material it uses for a synchro summon as level 2. But Calligrapher can special summon a monster to go along with it, whereas Peony just messes with your opponent's deck. But Calligrapher can only be special summoned by tributing, for now, Willow, whereas Peony can be special summoned by tributing any Flower Guardian, so it has a lot more flexibility. All in all, it's good to see two tuners that can handle different situations, taking a different brush strokes for different brush blokes approach. Flower Cardian Polonia is a level 12 monster with 100 attack and defense, and while you control a level 11 or lower Flower Cardian monster, you can special summon this card from your hand. Also, you can't normal or special summon monsters for the rest of the turn except Flower Cardians. When this card is targeted for an attack, you can negate the attack, end the battle phase, then draw a card. So hey, if worse comes to worse, you have a way to bring your opponent's aggression to a halt while drawing you a card. Okay, maybe not the draw, because your opponent's probably not going to see Polonia and attack into the attack negator that draws your opponent a card. Though that does imply your opponent would have read a Cardian monster, which I guess isn't all that likely. What is likely is that they'll use some kind of removal to get Polonia off the board so they don't have to deal with it, but in a simplified game state, your opponent isn't going to have much of a choice but to just sit on their hands and wait for an out. So with a little bit of planning, you can keep your opponent's offensive rooted in place. Our last main deck monster is Flower Cardian Polonia with Phoenix, a level 12 monster with 2000 attack and defense that can't be normal summoned or set, and must first be special summoned from the hand by tributing a level 12 Flower Cardian monster, except a copy of itself. If this card is special summoned, you draw a card, and if you do, show it, then you can special summon it if it's a Flower Cardian monster, otherwise send the drawn card to the grave. And once per turn, when this card inflicts battle damage to your opponent, you draw a card, making this the third Flower Cardian that gives you advantage by attacking into your opponent. So it's great to know our theme isn't made entirely of main deck weenies, it's only mostly made of main deck weenies. And that's all of our main deck cards, now it's time for the extra deck ones, and they get pretty spicy pretty quickly. First up is Flower Cardian Boardfly, a level 6 synchro monster with 2000 attack and defense, requiring a tuner and two non-tuner monsters specifically. It grants all your Flower Cardian monsters piercing, which is great for all the main deck ones we want to be working with, and once per turn you can banish a Flower Cardian monster from your grave, and until the end of your opponent's next turn, your opponent cannot activate cards or effects in the grave, also they can't special summon monsters from the grave. That's actually incredibly dope, it's like Abyss Dweller but on a whole other level. Not only are grave effects locked out, but summons are out the window as well. They can still use non-grave effects to add cards back from their grave to the hand, but as far as converting them into board presents, nah uh uh Next, I want to draw attention to the name. Little weird, right? I mean, the name Boardfly already seems a bit suspect, but the way it's spelled seems way too clunky. Well, that's because it's meant to be a portmanteau of the Yaku this card represents. A three-card combo of Boar, Deer, and Butterflies. A boar de fly and because it's a tuner and two non-tuners, it specifically has to be a three-card combo. Eh? Eh? Boy, this archetype is just as cheesy as I am. Flower Cardian Moonflower Viewing is a level 6 synchro tuner monster with 2000 attack and defense, requiring a tuner and two non-tuner monsters specifically. Once per turn, during your main phase, you can draw a card, and if you do, show it. Then if it's a Flower Cardian monster, you can special summon it, 
ignoring its summoning conditions, and it can attack directly this turn. If you activated this effect though, you skip the draw phase of your next turn. And when this card is used as Synchro Material, you can treat it and all other Synchro Material that have a level as level 2. This monster is based on two different Yaku, the Moon Viewing and the Cherry Blossom Viewing, each one using the specific Sake Cup card, which you can see in the art. If you're stuck with one tuner and two non-tuner Cardians, you can fold them into Moonflower Viewing, giving you another shot at peeling a Flower Cardian off the top. And this time, you don't have to worry about summon restrictions, because Moonflower Viewing just ignores them. And since the card can attack directly, you can potentially swing in for 2000 damage and get the additional draw from your combat Cardians, before using Moonflower Viewing and other Cardians to make even bigger monsters. Just be careful about the draw phase skip because it's a pretty hefty toll. Emphasis on pretty because this card is gorgeous. Flower Cardian Light Shower is a level 8 synchro monster with 3000 attack and defense, requiring 1 tuner and 3 non-tuner monsters specifically. Your opponent can't target Flower Cardian monsters you control with card effects, and they can't be destroyed by card effects. And during your opponent's draw phase, if they draw any number of cards for their normal draw, inflict 1500 points of damage to your opponent. And once per turn, during your opponent's end phase, activate one of these mandatory effects. You either skip the draw phase of your next turn, or this card has its other effects negated until your opponent's next standby phase. This synchro is based on the Yaku, Amashiko, which combines the Rain Man card, who has that big umbrella, with any three of the Bright cards, which are the 20-point cards. So you have a four-card combo in Koi Koi, and a synchro that requires four material. This theming is immaculate. Now, when it comes to the mandatory debilitating effect, if you're under the effect of Moonflower Viewing, then there isn't really much of a choice. You're already skipping the draw phase of your next turn, and because they specifically say you skip your next turn's draw phase, you can resolve both skips with a single phase, which is super sweet. However, if you're not under that and you're low on resources, that could be a problem. With the right Cardians, you can continue to cycle through your deck, and because of Light Shower's protection, they can do so unimpeded by effects like Infinite and Permanence. But if any of those draws whiff before you can get the ball rolling, you're kinda stuck with a 3000 attack monster and little else. It's a very strong 3000 attack monster, but there's only so much that someone armed with an umbrella and a stack of soggy cards can do. Our last card is Flower Cardian Light Flare, a level 10 synchro monster with 5000 attack and 0 defense, requiring a tuner and 4 non-tuner monsters specifically. Once per turn, during either player's turn, when your opponent activates a spell or trap card, you can negate the activation, and if you do, destroy it. Very big Xi'an energy there, I dig. Also, if a Flower Cardian monster you control battles an opponent's monster, that opponent's monster has its effects negated during the battle phase only. And if this face-up Synchro Summoned card is destroyed by battle or leaves the field because of an opponent's card effect while in its owner's control, you can special summon a Flower Cardian Synchro monster from your extra deck, except another Light Flare. This Synchro is based off the Goko Yaku, which is a combination of all five of the 20-point cards. So even by itself, Light Flare can take out just about any monster in the game. It negates any protections it has while it fights them, so even things that can't normally be destroyed by battle will fold to this 5 card combo. Alright, that's all of our extra deck monsters, now it's time for the spells and traps. Flower Gathering is a normal spell that special summons 4 Flower Cardian monsters with 100 attack and different names from your deck and attack position, but their effects are negated and cannot be tributed for a tribute summon. And you can't normal or special summon other monsters during the turn you activate this effect, except Flower Cardians. And this one counts before and after, as opposed to a number of our Flower Cardian monsters, so don't get too wild with splashing in other cards. However, despite the restriction placed, this card is immensely powerful. See, the fact that it summons a bunch of 100 attack flower cardians means you're assembling the 1 point chaff cards, which are the cards in a suit that don't have any modifiers on them like animals. Not only does this help assemble synchro material, but it also helps summon the 10 and 20 point cardians that match their suit. For instance, if you have zebra grass with moon in hand, but there are no level 8 cardians on board to tribute for their summon, you can bring out Zebra Grass with Flower Gathering, because despite its huge level, it's only got 100 attack. And the same goes for Pine with Crane, Willow with Calligrapher, Polonia with Phoenix, and any of the 1000 attack Cardians that can just tribute any Cardian for their own summon. This is actually kinda cool, because this is the biggest example I've found of how knowing the mechanics of Koi Koi helps you better play Cardians, because it takes how everything fits together and puts it in a cohesive framework. That's just the magic of this particular kind of gathering. 
Flower Stacking is a normal spell that has you choosing three flower guardians with different names from your deck and placing them on top of your deck in any order. And during the main phase, except the turn this card was sent to the grave, you can banish this card from your grave, then target a flower guardian monster in your grave and add it to your hand. Now, stacking, from a rules perspective, is very illegal. Which means when a card gives you the chance to do so, you should do it as much as possible. By manipulating the top three cards of your deck, you can guarantee just how the next three Cardian summons will go. And with practice, you'll be able to quickly identify which cards are most beneficial to you at any given time, and in what order they should be placed. And the fact that it can give you back a Cardian on a later turn shouldn't be overlooked, especially if you're locked out of a draw phase by Moonflower Viewing or Light Shower. Just make sure you get really good at it before doing so, because if you mess it up, no one is going to want to hear you complain about it. I mean, you did stack the deck yourself, so there's no one else to blame. Recardination is a normal spell that targets a Flower Cardian monster in your grave, adds it to your hand, then you can special summon a Flower Cardian monster from your hand, ignoring summoning conditions. And if this card is sent to the grave by a Flower Cardian monster's effect, you can excavate the top five cards of your deck, and if you do, add an excavated spell or trap card from among them to your hand, and place any remaining cards on top of your deck in any order. Order. So on activation, you get a free Flower Cardian onto the field, no question. It doesn't even have to be the same Flower Cardian you picked up from the grave, so you can save it for part of a later combo. And if you hit it off of a Flower Cardian's effect, yeah, it'll suck that you whiffed, but this effect more than makes up for it. You get to have any spell or trap card out of your top 5, and then choose how the remaining cards are set up, so you have even more knowledge of your Cardian lines moving forward. I don't know if this makes Recardination stronger than Flower Stacking, or just differently powerful, but either way, it's always nice to see when a card gets saved from the Wasteland that is the Bulk Box. Super Koi Koi is a normal spell that excavates the top three cards of your deck and special summons as many Flower Cardians from among them as possible, ignoring summoning conditions. However, their levels become two and they have their effects negated, which is why I presume they got the level change, so you can still use any tuners you summoned despite not being able to modulate levels with their effects. You banish any remaining cards you excavated, and if you do, lose a thousand life points for each. And it looks like we found the mechanic that reflects what happens when you mess up after calling Koi Koi. You can also banish this card from your grave and tribute a monster to special summon a Flower Cardian monster from your hand, ignoring summoning conditions. This is another way to smooth out your Flower Cardians, so you can summon those that don't quite match what you have on field. And bonus, if you use the second effect of Super Koi Koi, you're not going to enact the special summon restrictions of many of our Cardians. In fact, the first part doesn't do that either, potentially getting you three free material for whatever you want. And you can take the potentially out of that if you combo it with Flower Stacking. Set up the top three cards of your deck, then immediately summon them out with Super Koi Koi. Their effects are negated, so you only really need to focus on how the summoned cards work with the ones in your hand. Or alternatively, just make sure one of those cards is a tuner, and make Board Fly or Moon Flower Viewing. And of course, if things get desperate, you can always play this card blind and see what happens. I mean, people do the same thing with Allure of Darkness all the time, what could go wrong? Super All In is a normal spell that has you returning a Synchro Monster you control to the extra deck, and if you do, special summon four Flower Cardian monsters from your grave, then draw a card and show it. Then if it's a Flower Cardian monster, you can special summon it, ignoring summoning conditions. Otherwise, destroy as many monsters you control as possible, and if you destroyed at least one, have your life points. And during the end phase, if this card was sent to the grave by the effect of a Flower Cardian monster this turn while in your possession, you can add a Speller Trap card from your grave to the hand. Which is fantastic. I love having more cards we can pseudo whiff on, so we can get at least some kind of effect. As for the initial effect, yeah, this is the wildest thing imaginable. I love it. You can turn the monsters you summoned off of Super Koi Koi into a Synchro, use its effect, then trade it in using Super All In. And if you set up your deck correctly with a Flower Stacking or Milled Recardination, then you don't have to worry about blowing up your whole field. You'll also get all the effects of the Cardians you summoned, which is bonkers. At this point, you should have enough material to make Light Flare, and just like the Gogo Yaku, you can take that combo and cruise in for game. I freaking love this card, I'm super all into it. Our last card is something of a floodgate, Fraud Freeze, a continuous trap card that, once per turn, when your opponent special summons any number of monsters from the hand except during the damage step, you can return to the hand all monsters your opponent controls that were special summoned from the hand. And if neither player controls a Flower Cardian Synchro monster, send this card to the grave. 
This was made during the era of Pendulum Summoning, so this had a bit more targets as you could bounce anything from the hand that was Pendulum Summoned. And while this doesn't hit anything summoned from the deck, or the extra deck, or the grave, there are some other mechanics that this can work well with. While Rituals have been finding very cheeky ways to summon from everywhere but the hand, there are still quite a few that have to be summoned from there, which Fraud Freeze can mess with. They also hit a lot of main deck monsters that have very specific special summon requirements that have to be from the hand. Think your Cyber Dragons or BLSs. Though it doesn't negate the summon, it only gets them off the field, so uh, don't use this if your opponent's running Elemental Lords. This also, hilariously, makes this a key card in the Mirror Match, since a lot of Arcardians get summoned from the hand. Though requiring a Cardian Synchro monster to be on the field the entire time is a huge letdown, so I'm not entirely sure if this card is the real deal. Okay, so that's all the Cardian cards, but what do we do with them? Well, there's certainly a case to be made that we want to play the control game. With proper sequencing, we can trigger many destruction effects, while ending on a big boss that burns our opponent every turn that has some very good widespread protection. However, if our resource loop is ever broken, we're in for a world of hurt, as we lack effective recovery tools. So with our ability to deal piercing battle damage, draw cards from battle, and summon a 5,000 attack behemoth, we'll want to play an aggro deck that leaves the damage and removal to our monsters, while the rest of our deck is all about keeping our opponent from interrupting that. So what can we play to help them out? Well, no matter what we pick, we can't include too many of them. We need to have an enormous saturation of Flower Cardians to maximize our chances of resolving their effects, and the fact that even our on theme spells and traps don't count for this is already pushing it. That being said, cards that can fix your hand are invaluable, and the Cardians, despite all the plant imagery, are warriors, so Rhoda can search out our level 1s and 3s. They're also all dark, so Allure of Darkness can trade out our mismatched Flower Cardians to hopefully find some that are more agreeable to our current resources. And if you have any Cardians stuck in your grave and no way to bring them back, the Warrior Returning Alive has you covered. While just about all the Flower Cardians have special summoning restrictions, they usually say, must first be special summoned. So once that's been properly accomplished, you can use any number of revival effects to bring them back. While Monster Reborn is a quick and easy way to do so, Call of the Haunted and Back to the Front can be used to trigger their on special summon effects on your opponent's turn, because nothing says they have to be special summoned by their own effect to get that trigger. As far as Floodgates go, we can rock Rivalry of Warlords and Gozen Match with the best of them. But Rivalry doesn't do much to hit Sword Soul and Fluanderese, and Gozen Match can't really do anything against the light-dominated Drytron. But an oft-forgotten Floodgate that we have some surprising synergy with is And the Band Played On. Now, this can stop a number of our own plays, namely when it comes to summoning cards of the same suit, but we have a number of different levels, and all the plain one-point Cardians summon specifically if you have ones on field that have a lower level. Your opponent, on the other hand, will find it a bit more difficult to work around. Moe and Taya will be unable to resolve their token summoning effects. Fluanderese will no longer be able to normal summon a second level one to accompany the first. And once the Drytron opponent has a single module on board, then they aren't going to be able to summon any more until they clear it off the field. Which not only keeps them from triggering more on summon effects, but also keeps them from tributing Ben 10. Finding play sequences that summon Halka Fibrax can give you a lot of long-term advantage. You're not going to be able to summon any of your on-theme tuners with this effect, but that's not really the point. What we want to do, in contrast to a lot of decks, is use its effect on our opponent's turn. Moonflower Viewing is itself a Synchro Tuner, making it a viable target for summoning. Alternatively, you can get Formula Synchron for the card draw and the ability to Quick Synchro on your opponent's turn, a time where you're not likely to have a lockout for special summoning. Pair Formula Synchron with Board Fly to make Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon to make your opponent's play sequences even more of a nightmare that turn, or combine it with Light Shower at the last possible moment to make Barone. While you are losing the protection it provides, that's why we're doing it at the last possible moment. And that way, we don't have to make a choice during the end phase. And then you get a negate and some pops out of it, what's not to like? Do you want a way to always know what's on top of your deck so you don't whiff? Then boy howdy do I have a convulsion of nature for you. Sure, this takes a bit away from Peony with Butterfly, but that's a small price to pay for perfect top deck knowledge. And yes, I too can't believe this is not the silly tech pick. As for that silly tech pick, 
Well, we're summoning monsters with a ton of levels, and while we get into summon locks fairly easily, both for normal and special summons, the only thing that normal summon locks you for the entire turn is flower gathering. So, with some proper planning, that normal summon can be used to bring out the Calculator. That's right, 300 attack per level is no joke, especially when you're regularly summoning monsters with 8 to 10 levels. Manage to get 27 levels on board in total, including the two provided by the Calculator, and they can swing in by themselves for game. I don't know if there's a Yaku that includes a little math device in it, but if not, I'm about to house rule one in. And that's all I have to say about Flower Cardians. Are they going to be taking tournaments by storm? Well, maybe if they ever print the scroll cards, but for now, they're a deck that demands a high amount of dedication to learn the ways it's meant to flow, and an understanding of the format you're in to make the most of your on-summon effects, as well as which synchros best fit which matchup. This tends to mean it has a very low level of representation, but master the game, and with a bit of luck, you'll be accumulating points left and right, showing your opponent that you're the master of two card games, and not just one. You know, just a little Hana Fuda for thought. But now, I want to hear what you all have to say. Are Cardians the next big thing in multi-deck drifting, or do they fall a bit flat? Let me know in the comments, and once again, big thanks to Tokyo Treat and Sakura Co. for sponsoring today's episode. If you want to experience some delicious Japanese snacks, whether it be classic, contemporary, or both, all while helping the channel, make sure to use my links down below to sign up today. I'd also like to give a big thank you to the other sponsor of my videos, my lovely patrons, including this month's illustrious Quasar Commander, Ashling Waltz, Nebula Navigators, Third Dynasty, Ava Goule, Adam Zagdell, Biohazard 011, Eric, Frankie, Genesis Yu-Gi-Oh, Gloomba 331, Great Big Pillock, Howling Zangetsu, Inblink, Ironic, John Manji, Julius Sneezer, Larakia, Maximum Action X, Panther J, Rebel King Lucifer, Ruxeth Sarani, Shooting Star 3300, The Fresh Prince of Conair, The Wizard Moose, Tyler Cranston and Xander Wolfensberger, Cosmic Crusaders, Bear Sharktopus Studios, Chaz Ghost, Corbinisms, Cozy Boat 275, Harry the Ominous Benefactor, Jesus Garcia, Manga Pages, Marion James E. Picotta, Nitromo, RGS, Rem T. Bright and the Legendary Raven, as well as the wonderful Starlight Explorers you see on screen now. I'm only able to continue doing this thanks to the support of these lovely people, so if you'd like to be a part of these credits as well as help me in my journey to cover all of Yu-Gi-Oh!'s archetypes, please check out my YouTube membership or Patreon links in the description to see if I have anything you'd like on offer. And if you'd like to see another deck that's all about long combo strings, check out this video I made covering Synchrons. And if you want to see two Yugi tubers going at it, check out Noah Jenk and I's latest series Progression Polls, where your voice shapes the format. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye